Hi and welcome back to the Peregrine Dame. I'm Rachel Parsons and we're in London. I'm Rachel Parsons. I travel the planet largely alone in order to get a truer perspective of this amazing globe. No distractions, no itineraries. Up close and personal. <laughs> And I'm ready to show you that traveling solo doesn't have to be so scary. London's a city of just over seven and a half million people and one of my favorite places to explore alone. The history, beauty, and architecture rival any city anywhere. And when you happen to catch it on a sunny day, there's nothing that compares. I have a confession to make, and that is I'm a complete Anglophile. And I know I'm not the only one out there. I love London. I love England. I always have. And summers like this summer are perfect. They're so precious because they're so rare. But it is warm. It is sunny. Everybody is outdoors. And it is lovely in London. Which means, of course, that I'm heading for the nearest, dankest, darkest cellar I can find. Gordon's Wine Bar is thought to be the oldest wine bar in London, which makes them think that it might be one of the oldest in the world. It's been in its current form here in the Kipling Building since the 1890s. The building itself has been around since the 1600s, when the Bank of the Thames actually came up to it and functioned as a warehouse. Rudyard Kipling famously wrote the light that failed in the parlor above the bar. Gordon's Wine Bar is usually my first stop when I get to London because it combines two of my favorite things, history and wine. An amazing wine list. You get anything you want, anywhere in the world, and they do their share of their own blended casts as well. Cheers. Up until 1864, Gordon's actually sat directly on the bank of the Thames River and it was a warehouse. Gordon's wine bar is in the cellar, this beautiful, old, dank, musty cellar of the original building. When the river was embanked in 1864, the building obviously couldn't be used as a warehouse anymore. Even though some storage was still used in it, it turned into uh, a tenant's building. That's how Red Kipling ended up living up here. It's basically stayed exactly the same since it opened in 1890. Every once in a while, some of the great old ads and newspaper clippings that are out on the walls rotate, but not very often. Aside from an amazing wine list, there's also always a little buffet outside. You can get cheeses, meads, little bites to eat, little tapas, a little bit of nosh, which is perfect because this is located very near the theater district. And after a show, it's absolutely grand packed. In fact, you can't move out in the main way, but if you want to come by, get a little bite to eat, have a couple glasses of wine, and uh, talk to the theater crowd, it's the perfect place. There's a tube line that runs right next to this thing, and every once in a while when you're sitting in here, the ground starts rumbling and you can feel the entire building and walls tremble because there's a train that's running directly beside us right now. Which that's kind of a little spooky. It makes you feel a little uneasy knowing that you're, you know, under a bunch of stone with a train running by. So if you're that squeamish, they've got an outdoor option too. Sit outside. You'll be missing the 17th century ambiance, but then again on a sunny day, Nothing compares. Next time on the Peregrine Dame, we actually get some of that sun and I try not to blind people in the process.